But Need 3 Shift has been in development for about 18 months. Um, the product actually started out of the passion for racing cars and driving cars. And uh, when we decided to go a little bit more authentic with the Need for Speed brand, uh, I've quickly volunteered to build a game uh, with my racing background and having, you know, being a race driver and all. And uh, I met with a team in London, the Slightly Mad Studios team, and they showed us a tech that we loved and uh, that we figured we could build a pretty spectacular game based on. So we spent the first, you know, good six months of development actually focusing on the core elements of, of a racing game which is you know how it feels to be in the car how it feels to race and drive the car and what happens to you when you crash what happens to you when you break what happens to you when you take over or get taken over by other cars when you play the game that's the first thing you'll notice you know everything from the in cockpit view to you know head movement under braking or under crashing uh, or you know camera blurring when you crash or when you go fast so that you focus your eyesight on, on the, the road instead of on other things around you. Um, sound obviously, uh, AI that adopts to, to how you drive and, and that come back at you if you hit them or that actually make mistakes or you know the crash, crash out or they hit each other in front of you and we basically wanted to achieve uh, a game where the AI never appear to do the same things twice. Everything in the cockpit kind of works, all the dials work, you know, uh, the speedometer, the odometer, you know, the fuel pressure, fuel meter, everything is, is working. You can look around in the cockpit and you'll see, you know, cars on your right, cars on your left. You, you'll see, you know, small things like the leather looks like leather and the carbon fiber looks like carbon fiber, so it's highly detailed as you've seen in screenshots. We've applied a lot of g-forces to the, the body and the camera. So when you break, your head goes forward. If you crash, you know, you, you, your head gets swung around. The great thing about the tech that the Flight the Mad guys have is that uh, once you, if you build a Porsche as an example, where the, where the engine sits in the back, uh, it's, it's, it has a very typical way of behaving. So what the guys do, they plug in a bunch of data and then you, that basically tells you the engine is here, here's the, the, the distance between the wheels, uh, the weight is this, and the brake bias should be this and so on. Uh, and then once you, that's kind of the first step in the raw data. Once you have that in, you then start playing with the numbers and start, you know, basically tuning it. And, and very quickly from, from raw data, you can, you can assess whether this is gonna be fun or not to drive. So the underlying tech helps us to iterate on cars instead of trying to get them somewhat right. We get them somewhat right immediately and then we can we can work on fine-tuning them to perfection, basically. It's not open world, uh, it's, it's track-based to a large extent. You'll see famous tracks around the world, you'll see some fictional tracks, as you've seen today, the London track that we have, which is based in a real location, but it's, it's, there's no you know, F1 track in London, unfortunately, uh, but we made one for you. So, um, in this particular race mode, at least, that's what we have. We have other race modes that we can't talk about today, but uh, they will be, you know, different types that once you see them, you, you realize that this is actually more than just a track-based racing game. There's a pedigree to what a Need for Speed game should be. So like, you want to have licensed cars, there should be, um, obviously, tuning is in the game, in all, basically all of them, and, and customization to your cars, um, changing body kits, changing liveries, changing you know, tuning your car, putting a different engine on it, and those kinds of things. And when you see it, you'll realize that it, it looks better than anything in the industry today. Yeah. And then the second thing I'll think you notice is the driver experience and the, how different it actually is. It's it's actually hard to talk about it and, and not show it, but once you see that, I think that's what people are going to talk about. Need for Speed Shift is coming to Xbox 360, PS3, PC, and PSP in the fall of 2009.